that the end is also a beginning, and proclamation is made, God save the Queen. Here she is, Queen Elizabeth II, radiant with all the charm of youth and beauty. Her sailor husband is with her. They accept the heavy burden of royalty with a smile. And so the pageant goes on unfolding. The Queen's birthday salute is fired by a troop of the Royal Horse Artillery. lifeguards and the blues, all the horsed cavalry that's left, form the sovereign's escort to the trooping of the colour on the horse guards parade. The Queen rides with members of the royal family at the head of her generals and staff. Meanwhile, foot guards have been assembling. They are drawn up in line. Massed bands march and countermarch across the parade ground. The Queen inspects the parade, riding along the ranks. Next, the Queen's colour is carried, or trooped, down the line. Afterwards, the regiments march past. First, with ceremonial solemnity of step, in slow time. Then in quick time, with livelier tread. Household cavalry go by to take up their position for the march back to the palace. Here, large crowds gather to cheer the Queen as she comes out onto the balcony. Once upon a time, the sovereign needed a fortress to live in. Today, the Tower of London only houses the symbols of sovereignty, the regalia. Anyone can go and see them. Just ask the way of one of those warders wearing uniform assigned to them by Henry VII in 1485. St Edward's crown, only used at the coronation, lies above the orb with its cross denoting Christian rule. The imperial crown there is worn on ordinary state occasions like the opening of Parliament. That's the drill sword of state, and that's the collar of the Order of the Garter. Those are the scepters. The eagle-shaped ampulla contains the consecrated oil for the anointing. 